Today's project is going to include the surface preparation of this pipe. We're going to use sandpaper uh, to protect our eyes. We have some safety glasses. We also have a dust mask because we're going to have quite a bit of uh, debris that's going to be floating around here as we remo remove the rust. Uh, after we get into the uh, rust removal aways, we'll actually use a clean white rag and some paint prep to help us see where we are in terms of progress in removing the rust. And then our final wipe down before we do application will include using another clean white rag and the paint prep to wipe down the entire surface before applying the Stow Bright high temperature paint. We're going to use this wire brush to remove the rust from this surface. So you can see by using the wire brush and the sandpaper that abrasion has removed some of that rust. We use the paint prep and we can see that we're getting down to the clean metal surface. We're going to continue this process for the entire pipe and get this pipe cleaned up and ready. So we've done a lot of sanding here to remove a lot of rust. What we're going to do now is a last wipe down with the Stow Bright paint prep. All we do is spray that product on the metal here and then wipe it down with a clean cloth. And we do this a few times and I've already done this several times but you can see I'm still picking up some debris here. So the idea is to get a nice clean surface when you're getting ready to work with the Stow Bright high temperature paint. So we worked a lot on getting the rust off and now we've got a nice clean metal surface and what we're going to do as soon as this dries, which only takes a few minutes, is we're going to actually apply our first coat, which is a mist coat of the Stow Bright high temperature paint. Nice and clean, you'll notice that I've draped the stove itself. I've covered it with a plastic sheet and taped off around the base here so that all I'm painting is the stove pipe itself in high temperature metallic black. I'm going to be spraying from a distance of about 12 inches, 10 to 12 inches from the surface, and I'm going to be spraying the pipe with what we call the mist coat. This is the first light coat. We're not really attempting to cover the pipe. We're just laying down some paint as our mist coat and then getting ready to put a second coat on about 10 minutes later. Again, I'm going to go ahead and start spraying here. I've got my safety glasses on so that I can spray safely and I'm going to go ahead and get myself about 10 to 12 inches away from the product here and, and I'm going to go ahead and spray to make a nice pass here with a mist coat. Again, I'm not trying to get a coverage, I'm just trying to lay some paint down for the first. I'm just quickly moving the pass by the stove. I'm not trying to cover. Now lay down a mist coat. We're going to shoot a second coat now. We're going to try to get this to fill and cover. Again, staying about 10 to 12 inches away from the surface, moving the can across the area, and trying to lay down a paint that's going to actually cover now and give you a nice finish. We're going to let this second coat dry about 15 minutes before we apply the third light coat. Continue painting around the pipe. Notice that I'm about 10 to 12 inches away from the surface, and I'm trying to get nice coverage with the product as I move through the area. And you can see that it's starting to lay down and it actually lays with that first mist coat. So we're now in the process of doing the initial burn, the initial firing process. We're going to follow the steps in the Stowbrite user guide with this wood stove. To help start our kindling fire here, we're just going to use some regular kindling material and we're going to use the Stowbrite fire starter to help us start that fire. We'll keep this kindling fire going for about 5 to 10 minutes and that'll allow us to heat up the metal just above ambient air temperature, probably approaching a temperature of 100 degrees Fahrenheit surface temperature. That'll move the, that'll keep the paint from being shocked. So now we've had the kindling fire going for a little while and we've now added a little bit of fuel to it. We're going to add some more fuel. We're, what we're trying to do now is build a fire that's of a normal size, maybe a little hotter than your normal size fire. In this size firebox I'd probably use two or pieces of this type of quarter round fuel to build it up to a normal size fire. I want to keep this normal sized fire a little bit larger than normal sized fire burning for about 45 minutes to an hour. During this time period you might experience a smell or an odor. You'll want to ventilate the room to help you dissipate that odor and eventually when we stoke up the fire to very hot in a later stage we're going to see some visible smoke. 
We've now stoked up the fire to a very hot fire. We've added a lots of fuel, opened up our damper to let lots of air in, and you can see there's been visible smoke off of the pipe. This is the smoke that's going to give you an odor in your home. You want to have some ventilation. We have a door open. We have some cross ventilation working here to allow us to dissipate the smell. We'll keep this fire going for about 45 minutes to an hour, and the entire pipe will get hot enough to set the paint in its final color.